10,000 miles. I ran 10,000 miles. It's like running from Austin, Texas to Perth, Australia. Assuming that I became divine at some point and run over water. <laughs> or, for those of us that like to keep things in the context of Texas, it's like running from the panhandle in Perryton, Texas, all the way down to the edge of Texas and Brownsville, and back six times. <laughs> it took me eight and a half years, and that's an average of about three and a quarter miles per day every day. And I logged every step and every mile into a journal. It all started as a 2007 New Year's resolution. I was inspired, as I often am, by an article I read, I read in Runner's World about a guy who was a streaker. A streaker means you run every day. And I said, <laughs> no, right? I said, I will run every single day in 2007, and I will run at least 1,000 miles. That was my goal. And I did it. 2007 came. December 31st came, I did it. So then I thought, what's next? Well, what was next is in 2008, I renewed my 1,000 mile goal, and I had then renewed it again in 2009, and somewhere around 2010, I decided to change it to 10,000 miles in 10 years. On May 16th of this year, I completed and ran my 10,000th mile. I finished a year and a half early, and I will tell you that there's a lot of things I learned over 10,000 miles in eight and a half years. One, I transformed from being somebody that runs into a runner. I learned a great appreciation for weather. <laughs> I ran in the pouring rain. I ran in freezing cold temperatures in strange countries. And I ran in the heat of Texas. I learned that I have become stronger and faster as I'm getting older. If you'd have told me I'd be faster at 45 than I was at 30, I would have told you you were crazy. <laughs> But I posted a PR every single year. I run half marathons. I posted a PR every single year, including this year, when I ran my half marathon a minute and a half faster than I ran last year. I learned what it was like for your children to be proud of you. And for them to want to be athletic and strong, not because you tell them to, but because of an example that you set for them. And I am so proud to say all three of my children are runners. <laughs> I saw amazing places, and I got to run in amazing places all over the world. And I learned that when you run in a new city, you see that city in a way that is unique to only runners. You see signs on doorways. You see and experience people in their natural habitat interacting with each other. You smell restaurants and alleys and rivers as you're running, and the whole city becomes alive for you. I learned to use my running to work through worries and fears and frustrations. But the main thing that I learned was something I didn't expect to learn. It was something that arose over time after each step and after each mile. And that was that I could speak something. I could say something. And I could count on myself to deliver on what I said. Someone once told me, you either have what you want or the reasons why not. And I didn't understand that at the time, but after, 10,000 miles in eight and a half years, and all the considerations and all the reasons that came up over that time, I understood what that meant. Once I realized that I could count on myself, once I realized that my word meant something to me, what came up was that I, and I alone, am responsible for my life. Me. 
I can do it. Because in the mornings when I was too tired, or it was too cold, or it was too hot, and all I wanted to do was sleep in, and I got up, and I laced up my shoes, and I grabbed my dog, and I walked out the front door, and I ran week after week, day after day, I realized this is something that I'm doing for myself and I can count on myself to do it. Sometime during that eight and a half years, I decided to start, I decided to start martial arts. And I started to be with my middle son, Daniel, who wasn't into the other kinds of sports. And during that time, I decided I was gonna be a black belt. Now, this was not easy for me. It did not come naturally to me. I'm not a naturally gifted person in that kind of sport. But I said I was going to be a black belt. And after four years, I tied on a black belt. And then I said, I want to have a second degree black belt. And that was even harder. But after two more years, I tied on a belt with two stripes. And now, thank you. <laughs> and now I say that I will be a third degree black belt. And you know what? There is absolutely no reason that I'm not going to do that. I completely count on myself to do that. It's not if my instructors let me. It's not as long as I don't get injured. It's not as long as I don't quit because of work or some other thing. I will be a third degree black belt. Now, there are things that I do that I fail at. I do not succeed at everything I undertake. But I know when I fail that I, I did that, I'm responsible for that. It's not my circumstances and it's not somebody else's fault. And I do not do anything alone. <laughs> Being responsible means that I knew I needed a running partner to keep me accountable to make sure I get up and I get out and I run. And I thank my sister for being there for many of my 10,000 miles. Being responsible means that I know I need support in helping watch my three children when I go out for a long run, or go on a long race. And my mother, who's here today, and many friends were always there for me to support me. It means that after every race, the first person I call is my father, every time because he's the one that encouraged me and inspires me to have this love affair with running. I need encouragement. I need support, and I need to be held accountable. And being responsible means that I do what it takes and I use all the resources available at my disposal to keep my word. Now, here's what I want to leave you with. Whatever extraordinary thing that you want to do in your life will be a culmination of many ordinary steps that you take day after day, steps that you take because you say so. And in the end, you will find freedom, and you will find that you've lived a most extraordinary